on campus doing this a couple times a week. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here to talk about networking. And we'll talk about a couple of tools of networking. And since no one's heard it but you, it's like a fresh start. Yep. Well, what I've done to just make this so people can find this is I have embedded uh, this presentation in my profile. So once you connect with me, and we're one-to-one -one connection, then all you need to do is go under my summary, and there's, there'll be a picture of the Taylor building, how to network effectively using LinkedIn and what you like and that. So this presentation's right here, so you know you don't have to take notes, you can just kind of remember, you can take notes if you want, but just kind of remember this, and then we'll be happy to so go through that. Um, and LinkedIn's changing. I just, uh, for my workout this morning, I took my little iPad, and on the elliptical down the park. I watched it, I found a documentary on Netflix about LinkedIn, and I learned a ton about what LinkedIn is all about. And LinkedIn is exploding. You know, about the same time, as, well, actually a little bit before Facebook went public with their IPO, and it's like been like this. Facebook has made a lot of money. LinkedIn went public, and it started out at $45 a share, it's now up to $300 a share. It's just taken off. Uh, LinkedIn has almost 4,000 employees. 72% have been working there the last two years. Uh, LinkedIn is exploding, and it, it really is a great tool. So this isn't going to be all about LinkedIn, but mostly. So the first thing we want to talk about is why you want to network anyway. Networking is about finding the right people so you can ask the right questions. One of the reasons that asking the right questions is valuable is to be sure that you're on the right career. That's why it's really valuable for even new freshmen to get on LinkedIn and start making connections. Uh, the other reason is to develop relationships with open doors of opportunities. So Steve Jobs said this, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. I think all that is so hard, you'll know what you're doing. <coughs> I love my job. I, I, work is fun. And I think if you guys will love your jobs and you know it's the right thing, then you'll be more passionate about it and do a better job. And then Joe Ehrman said, if you find the ladder of success when you get up there, you realize the ladder is on the wrong building. So I'm happy that happen. <laughs> so just a quick story on that. Uh, my son came through BYU Idaho. He's 28 years old now. He got hired out of college, worked, went to work for a mortgage bank. He did an internship with that bank. That's why he did internships, got hired with it. Um, Good pay, good benefits, great area, loved his boss, hated the work. And after about three or four months, he called me up and he said, Dad, I think something's wrong with me. He said, uh, I think I might have ADD. So he self-diagnosed with ADD. He couldn't concentrate at work, wasn't enjoying it. So he went to a counselor. The counselor said, well, maybe you have ADD, but let's get you on some medicine. I can't prescribe it, so let's go to the doctor. Went to the doctor, the doctor gave him a prescription. As he was leaving, the doctor said, uh, most people I prescribe this to don't actually have ADD. They just hate their jobs. Huh. So you don't want to have that happen. <laughs> so one of the values of networking is to be able to connect with employees, professionals, see what their day is like, what, what excites them. And there's people who would have loved the mortgage bank job, not my son. So we got my son on, on LinkedIn. He started networking. Uh, he got a job with Napa Auto Parts as a regional sales manager, and he loves every day he goes to work. He loves it. And it's just made a huge difference in his life. I just make more money. President Kimball said, God does watch over us and does notice us, but it is usually through someone else that he meets our needs. So you might ask, why is the alumni person and on campus doing this stuff? Well, we want to connect with our alumni. We have alumni out there who love this school, will have a testimony of the value of your majors, and they're, they're going to be able to open doors for you. And they're going to be more inclined, perhaps, than other professionals to open doors. So let's talk just briefly about this slide. Three steps to getting a job. One, you have to have a very good resume and a good LinkedIn profile. That's kind of job one. Job two is you need to be networking. Job three is you need to actually go out and find openings and apply for them. The problem is most people spend 90% of their job time doing this. 
and this yields the poorest results. You work with personnel, right? I HR. HR, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, and you've heard this before, right? Yes. Well, he's actually heard me give this exact, remind me your name. Mason. Mason, yes, I remember. Okay. But Mason's job is to help screen applicants, right? Yes. Well, we want to teach you to bypass Mason. Okay. Uh, and what happens when you network, you're going to get to know people. So there's a case in point, and Mason maybe has had a role in this. There's two openings on campus for the pathway department. Are you familiar with that one? Mm -hmm. 197 applicants, correct? Yep. Two spots, that's the good news. Um, but as he's gone through those applicants, there's going to be probably 150 that meet the basic requirements, that have good cover letters, good resumes, they've completed the application spot on, right? How many are they going to interview, Mason? Do they know? Um, well, they screened out um, about 150 of them, so there's like 26 yeah. that they're actually looking at right now to yeah. see who they want to interview. And they'll interview? Probably four or five. Four or five for two spots. Okay. Well, if you're in a stack of that many applications, you've got to get out of that stack. You've got to get to the 26 and from the 26 to the five, right? Well, the best way to do that is to network. J.D. Griffith and Brian Justison and all those people who are going to be hiring this job, they're going to look to those things, but they're going to naturally gravitate to those people who they know. Now, when we talk about networking, a lot of times people say, networking is about who you no. know. Incorrect. It's true, but networking is more about who knows you. Okay? I have a buddy who's applied for that job. I don't know if he's going to get interviewed. He knows who J.D. Griffith is, but J.D. does not know him. That's the key. You have to expand your circle of influence so people know you and what you're all about. In this Netflix documentary I just talked about, the founder of Netflix, sorry, Netflix, I watched on Netflix, the founder of LinkedIn said, they asked him, what is the essence of LinkedIn? And he says it's connecting talent with opportunity. That's what it is. And so what we need to do is teach you how you can go out and and network so you can find your opportunities that match your talent, but you also have to know the gatekeepers. You have to know the hiring managers to have that actually make a difference. Uh, another slide that illustrates this point, this is from an article I picked up a while ago. 70% to 80% of jobs are not actually published. Now here at BYU Idaho, they publish every opening. So there may be companies that they have an opening, but they've already networked and they already have people that they know so they're not going to post it. They'll let these eight or nine people know we've got an opening. But 78% 78, 78 of the time we spend surfing the net when we should be networking. Because, this is the fact, friends and acquaintances hire other trusted friends and acquaintances. So you've got to get to that level. So what we're going to teach you today is how to use LinkedIn to expand your circle of friends and acquaintances so you can improve your opportunities. So here's the three steps that we believe you should follow in networking. Number one, prepare to be found. That's all about your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Primarily your LinkedIn profile. Two, find key connections. And the most important part is three. You have to turn those key connections into valuable relationships. That's where the job opportunities happen. And there's ways to do it. There's some kind of tricks to how to do that. And we're going to show you how to do that. Another way to look at this, uh, I'm in education. I've been at BYU-Idaho now for almost 28 years. I got hired right out of college here. And even though I make just an okay living, from the time I left Utah State and came to here until I retired in 10 or 12 years, I will have made well over a million dollars. Do I have any money in the bank? Not much. So I'm not a millionaire. But one way you can look at this is you're all going to make over a million dollars in your life. So you are a million dollar brand, but you're a business of one. So as a business of one, as you own like CEO of you know, company me, you need to ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? How are you going to market yourself? How can you use LinkedIn as a strategy? Not just a tool, but as a strategy. We're going to teach you that strategy. And you want to have your brand, your message delivered to increase awareness and build respect. Okay? And that's where the jobs are going to come. Once people know what you're about, and they get on LinkedIn, their philosophy matching talent with opportunity, then that's where the opportunities are going to happen. So the first
first part of your LinkedIn profile, the first part of being found is your kind of top box on LinkedIn has two critical elements. These are all important, but the most important thing is what's right below your name. That is your professional headline okay. and your picture. Now, the mistake that most people make, and it's not a you know, horrible mistake, but when they miss an opportunity, is if your headline says just BYU Idaho student, it doesn't say enough. It doesn't say enough. It says BYU Idaho in what? When do you graduate? What's your major? What projects have you done? So in 120 characters, you want to be able to say, aspiring healthcare administrator seeking connections. Talented healthcare administrator seeking opportunities. Something like that. You can list BYU Idaho student as well. Ariana, who's kind of my poster child, uh, she has already graduated, so we, we tweaked this just before she graduated, built this, and uh, so we put, you know, it's kind of like a progression, right? As a freshman, you're aspiring. When you're a senior last semester, you've had your internships, you've had your work, you've done your projects, you've had capstone, whatever. Now you're, you've kind of reached that talent level. The next thing is your picture. And your picture is super important, and a lot of people shoot themselves in the foot with the picture. So the next slide, when I show you this, if, uh, if you're related to anybody, apologize, or roommates or friends, I just randomly picked 15 BYU Idaho student <laughs> profile pictures. Okay? Your profile picture says, and maybe a first impression. You know someone? Uh, I know Joel. I know <laughs> Which one's you know? Uh, I know well, this Austin. one's one of you. He's one of you, right? Austin and yeah. then the one on the bottom left. Yeah. I know the one just above the one, the bottom left. There? Yep. Okay. Well, you could ask yourself, what does a picture say? You know, missionary picture, I'm not going to know, that's another missionary picture. <laughs> Some kind of engagement photo, Blake Hines, Table Rock, or wherever that is. Cropped, cropped, out of focus, selfie. <laughs> good, good, pretty good. This would be good if you had a, you know, maybe a tie on, and maybe out just a little bit. So, as, as remind me your name. Chance. Chance. Chance mentioned. Uh, we have our booth set up, so when we end, you can go out. If you feel like you're dressed enough, uh, we'll take your picture for free. If you don't feel like you're dressed enough, if you want to do it, we do it every Tuesday at the Manor Center by the information desk from noon to five. So anyway, your picture is very valuable. It's an important thing. The next part of your LinkedIn profile is your summary. This is your me in sixty seconds, me in thirty seconds. Uh, this is where you're going to have your brand stand out, your message. You're going to tell people what you're about, what you're talented, what you're seeking, those kind of things. And you need to realize as people get out on LinkedIn and they find you, they're going to see maybe just to hear before they decide if they're going to go any further. So you want to have that top part of this thing do your best work. The next section is your experience. Uh, experience is important. A lot of people make, they undervalue experience and they misinterpret it a little bit. Look at experience as roles, not just jobs. So Chance, are you the president? Yeah. President of this society, that's a role you should list right here. You mentioned not a paid job. He can also list it down in volunteer experience, but I'd list it here, okay? So jobs, volunteer role. Uh, one of the tricks that people have done, Mason, did you do this? Did you create your LinkedIn group? We talked about that. Yeah, we have. One of the things that you can do is you can create your own LinkedIn group. And uh, it's a way to network, but it also gives you other job titles. Founder of, so Ariana's the founder of the LDS Copywriter Group. Okay. So experience is another good place. Uh, this is an area, skills and expertise, or even listing that you are good at. As your LinkedIn network grows, this is really interesting because it actually tells you what people perceive you as. If you look at mine, if you go to my profile, I'm like alumni and all the stuff I do professionally and am trained to do, it doesn't even show up in the top 10. The top four or five that I'm listed at is actually the five that I'm not the best at. That's what people perceive you as. So it's just kind of interesting. But that's another place that you can kind of showcase your talents. On education, it's important to not just list BYU Idaho, your major. List society, list awards, list your GPA if you're proud of it. There's also a, a value in, in making it easy for you to be found. I, I didn't realize this until I watched this documentary, and this just at noon. 
main pin, I don't remember the, the millions of dollars or maybe, but it's like 67, 70% of their revenue comes from talent, it's a, it's a product they have called talent acquisition, talent resources, talent discovery, I don't remember the name, but it's the lion's share of their income. And there are no major companies, they buy this package that they spend thousands of dollars on which means they can see anything on anybody on LinkedIn. And they're using that to find and recruit talent. It's a huge business. 94% of companies use LinkedIn in hiring and finding talent. So make it easy for people to see your phone number and your email, even if they're out of, you know, not directly in your network. Uh, you can also embed stuff on your summary, education experience. You can put a project, resume, any portfolio, those kinds of things. Now the other reason this is valuable, let's pretend I'm one of the 94% that's looking to hire somebody. I'm going to use LinkedIn as a tool. So here's Brigham Young. I say, I, I'm interested in a BYU-Idaho student because uh, hardworking family values. Maybe I'm an alumni there. So I go Brigham Young University, Idaho, and I'm going to put in copywriter. When I put in copywriter, that's going to yield a results list. In this case, 88. Well, if you're number one, page one, you're going to be found. If you're number six, page 20, you're not likely to be found. So you move up this list, and it used to be that keywords was the primary sort factor, the primary search factor, but people were using it. I found somebody on LinkedIn, I just typed in marketing, there's like 1,200,000 marketing people on LinkedIn. So I said, well, how did this guy get to be number one out of 1,200,000? He had, link, he had marketing on his profile like 2,400 times. He just listed marketing, 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 marketing. He just cheated. So LinkedIn is devalued keywords, but they still count more than anything. But you show up and search. So if Mason and I searched for copywriter, we'd get the same 88, but we would get different results. But you'll trend to the top. And you trend to the top by how often you show up and search common connections, your activity, and keywords. So keywords are su still really, really important. We're actually going to hop off and look at another way to look at this. So in Ariana's case, she has keyword copywriter in her headlines, she has copywriter in her summary, in her experience. So let me, I'll have to minimize this just for a second. Does someone have a LinkedIn profile that they would be happy to let me look at? Okay. All right, let's look up chances real quick. Okay. Did I say that right? I just wanted you to rip it apart. So. Oh, no. <laughs> Do it. I'm just going to show you a little tool that I stumbled on. Um, actually, this one guy that does all these national LinkedIn seminars. Did it. So, Chance, what's your last name? Uh, Powell. So, it's C H A N S E. Okay. A N S E? -S -E. Yeah. Like that? C O W E L L? Uh huh. Okay, so this is just a tool. So here's Chance, President of BYU Healthcare. Now I'm hoping you have a summary. It's pretty good. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of your text, okay? Not all of it, I'll just... And if I was doing this and taking some time, I would maybe eliminate the date and some of those things, but I'm gonna go that far. change the color, you can change the font. I'm going to actually just make it so it's all horizontal. Okay? So, what stands out there? Society created Lincoln, BYU Idaho administration. Rexford. Okay? <coughs> now, if you want to be found for health care, okay? 
healthcare should be like the biggest word. Okay? Now a trick that you can do using Wordle is when you get to the point that you're applying for a job and you're going to create a cover letter and the stuff you're going to submit to them, you take their job description and you drop it in Wordle. And if it has words like self-starter, creative, you know, attention to detail, that written by the person who's going to hire you, perhaps, this human resource guy, okay, then you're going to go in and you're going to embed those same words into your thing, okay? And they're not going to have self-starter enough times, it might be the biggest word, but it'll give you a, so what happens then is when you go in to that interview and I read your cover letter, this guy's going to go, this sounds like he's a fit. Okay, it's just, a, it's just kind of a, a fun way to, to look at. And that was my main thing, I was wondering how do you guys show up better on the page, is that one of the reasons? Uh -huh. To get you further up on the page, if yeah. you have more keywords? Yes, and then the, the keywords that you want to be found for, so like healthcare, whatever. All right, so back to the presentation. Okay, we're hurry, so we need time for your pictures. Now, the other thing that uh, that you want, that we have created at BYU Idaho is uh, what we call BYU I Connect, and we have a little on our just go to the BYU Idaho, click alumni page, on BYU Idaho page, click on Find Alumni. This is going to take you to a, a, a directory where you can search by job title, company name by major, by area, and so in this case, I just put in Boeing, and I clicked mentors. We have about 5,000 alumni mentors, okay? So if I did, this is gonna find me my mentors at Boeing. There's about 55 of them. And I can say, okay, well, there's Jason B. He's an engineer, I'm interested in that. This brings up Jason's profile, and you can send him an email, see about his work experience. Uh, many times you have his address, oftentimes you have a phone number. So that's another tool. And the other thing we do each semester is we do a mentor match. And we actually have already done it for this semester. But every semester, at the start of the semester, we'll send an invite. Anybody participating at the semester? Okay, a couple. So we'll actually, in a shortly, let you know who your mentor is. We'll try and match you up as closely as we can based upon your interests. So another way to network. Okay, so let's talk about how LinkedIn works. LinkedIn is like playing a game. And if you, if you look at it like a game, you can kind of make it. A lot of people ask me, why would you even, why do LinkedIn? Uh, and there's actually really four good reasons to be on LinkedIn. And one of them, I think, applies to everybody. And actually, I was keep referencing this little documentary I watched. Uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, the CEO of LinkedIn said, we know LinkedIn's arriving because people are updating their profiles even when they're not looking. But LinkedIn is very valuable for people who are looking for work, people who are hiring, people who are selling something and promoting something. You have your business, your craft. Ariana is selling her, her capacity to be a freelance copywriter. She's selling that, okay? The fourth one is LinkedIn is a really good resource for professional development. Uh, there are really great groups on LinkedIn. There's gonna be some great healthcare groups. I'm part of an alumni advancement group and I've learned more by participating in that group, by reading the posts, reading the questions, reading the comments, the topics that professionals in my craft are doing, than I've learned at any conference I ever attended. And that happens every day. So even if you just, you know, you're settled in your job, you know, get on what you're passionate about and learn about your profession. That's the reason. But LinkedIn has these, you're building your network, okay? And you're just gonna start off small. Your network is made up of these four different kinds of people. First connections, ones are people who you've already connected with. They've accepted your invitation to connect and you've accepted theirs. Twos are connected to your ones. Threes are connected to your twos. And then there's group members. Well, the challenge is, is you could go out and say, all right, here's this CEO at a hospital in Salt Lake. This would be, this would be the contact. But if you and this person do not share any ones, twos, threes, or group members, your, your networks are separated. And that means you cannot connect. You'll see a LinkedIn member, that's it. Now your phone number, now their profile, that's it. Now if you pay a little bit, you see a little bit more, but there's ways around that. 
So the way you play the LinkedIn game is you need to expand your network. You need to increase the number of ones, primarily, because every time you do that, you increase your twos and threes, and then you ought to join some really good groups. Then what happens is this hospital administrator in Salt Lake is reachable. He can find you, if he's searching, you can find him or her. And then you can make that connection. Now another way to look at the LinkedIn game is this. Uh, and this slide is really complicated, but hopefully it can make sense. And there is no such thing as primary contact. That's the term I, I just used. But when you look at your group of all of your ones, you can kind of classify them into two groups. One would be what I call primary contacts. These are people that could be a mentor or a director. They're either doing what you hope to do someday, or they're a company that you'd like to work for. You're going to treat that them different than this one. Okay. Now, I'd be a perfect example of this one. I've never worked in a hospital. I don't have any experience there. I couldn't tell you what their day is like and what they're, what's great about their job. But my advantage to you is I give you access to my entire network. And within my network, there might be another person that you want to pull in as a one who's just going to give you their network. But within my network, I have access to hundreds, probably, of healthcare folks and some of these you're going to want to pull in to your primary contact. So I add in, I'll, there's some people, I say no to a few people, but almost anybody, if they're LDS, they're part of any CES group, I'm going to add. And the reason I want to do that is because as I grow my network, I help the BYU-Idaho community. You connect with me, I give you BYU-Idaho alumni and thousands of them. There's a gentleman named Scott Greenhouse from BYU. If you connect to him, he gives you the BYU world. So this is me, this is Scott. His would be a lot bigger than mine. How do you spell his name? Uh, G-R-E-E-N-H-A-L-G-H. H-A-L-G-H. Yeah. And you'll actually find him here. Okay, We actually have a link of what we call super connection. When I add people, I look for people who have big networks. Because if you add someone with a little network, your network's going to go like this. But if you have a, add a super connector, it's going to go like this. Okay. So here's an example. This is actually an old slide, but I'll just pretend this is my network's now about 9,000 big. But right now, this is 7,600. If you connect with me, my 7,600 ones become your twos. My 800,000 twos become your threes. So by adding one person, your network grows by about 800,000. That's why I give you access to more people by that. You can find more people. Well, we actually have a directory now on our homepage, just under networking and LinkedIn super connectors, of over 200 people, all alumni, except for one, Scott Greenhouse, he's on that list, uh, you'll find him, uh, that have big networks. And they've agreed to accept any BYU Idaho student. So you go in and you just start adding them. Create a little copy message, not the say it again and again, and just say, Dear Steve, thank you for being a BYU Idaho Super Connector. I'd be honored if you'd add me to your network. Send it. And then I will thank you message. Steve, thank you for adding me. Have a great day. Okay? And we're going to talk about the value of personal invite and personal thank you messages. And it's actually the two most important parts of this presentation. Any questions on that? Super, super good way to go out and build your network. So the other value is joining groups. We recommend uh, the BYU Idaho group. We've actually shortened the name to the Brigham Young University Idaho. We have a group for every department. We have BYU alumni is a great group, BYU management, LDS professionals. Here's an example. If I was a social media marketing guy and I wanted to add this group, I joined that one group. It's 600,000 big. It's like the city of Salt Lake City big. A social media marketers on LinkedIn. You add that, your network grows by 600,000 just by joining the one group. Okay, so another way to build your network. So now we're gonna, we're gonna kind of transition from having a really good profile that's going to be searchable and being found to, to going out and targeted in a targeted way, a strategic way, find connections. So this case, I look, I'm just doing, I'm gonna find BYU Idaho alumni in staffing and recruiting because I'm not finding, I don't want to find any ones in group members, I'm just selecting seconds and thirds. When that happens, it's going to bring up a list. 
And that list is going to have 59 people that I've not yet connected to that are seconds and thirds. And I want to connect with them. Well, the wrong way to do it is what I've done here. So Brooke had a connect button just like this. When I click that, it just sent message, invite sent. And in Brooke's inbox, she's going to say, Steve Davis would like to add you to his network. She's going to look at that and say, who is Steve Davis and why does he want to add me? The smarter way to do it is you click on the person's name, and then it brings up their profile. So Davis is second. He's a staffing recruiting. There's going to be a connect button. On that connect button, once I hit that, it's going to bring up this dialog box. Okay? The first thing is I have to say, how do I know David? Well, I don't. And down here, you're going to see this little troublesome message that says, only invite people you know well or who know you. Okay? Well, I've crossed that out. Just ignore that. But you do want to connect with people who you have something in common with. And this is, LinkedIn is, you know, they're saying, kind of maybe ethically don't do that, but then this is actually a LinkedIn message that they recommend, which implies that we don't know each other yet. So they can talk about both sides of it. So in this case, because we're alumni, the easiest thing to do is select classmate, even though you technically didn't go to school at the same time. And you say, Dear David, I'm a junior at BYU Idaho and found your profile on LinkedIn. I admire your career in healthcare administration, say, and hope to pursue a similar path. Would you be willing to connect with me and possibly offer some advice by email or phone? I would greatly appreciate your time. Now David knows what I'm about and why I'm seeking this connection. Okay. So that's the way to do it. That message right there, I would use a thousand times if I'm adding people in healthcare administration. And it's kind of like fishing, you know, and you're not going to have a perfect response rate. And there may be some out there that you don't want to follow up as strongly with, but there's going to be many that you want to follow up with. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is my favorite part of LinkedIn. Okay. Wait, I have a question yeah. for you. So, um, I ran into a couple people where I, I don't know them. I, I like their profession. I'd like to get to know them better. Um, but when I go to Adam, it says, you need to have their email or something. Yeah. How do you get around that? So, are, are they alumni? So you can't do you can't do the class maybe. Um, is there a colleague box? Uh, I don't think so. There should be a colleague box because they're outside of work. And if there's a colleague box, you have to say we are colleagues in this sense. We're interested in the same profession. Oh. So you have to kind of manufacture the right title in your experience list. Experience, experience, you know, and your healthcare administration role would be perfect. Or healthcare administration major be what you want. Their healthcare, your healthcare. Who's a colleague? Why? Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you said it's, you said acquaintances, but we, would we necessarily want to like add friends that are in a different major? Oh, absolutely. Really? And, and, and they might be like me to you because they're not going to help you get a job, but they give you their network. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, everybody adds to your network, even if they're small. Yeah. There's the people on bigger networks are going to increase it much more for sure. But okay, so here's the here's the why I love this part of LinkedIn. <laughs> Just the way LinkedIn works is kind of like this upside, this funnel, okay? Here's my ones at the bottom, and it grows exponentially. You're going to have ones, and you have lots of twos, you're going to have a, a bazillion twos. It just grows like this. In my network, I, right now, I'm about 9,000 ones, probably a little over a million twos. I have 13 million threes, okay? So you're going to find threes more than anything as you're out doing the search. The problem with threes is they're not easy to connect with. If you're on advanced search, uh, right here, up here, you click advanced search, you find them, okay? And it's, uh, this is, let's see how, how many thirds are on this page. But this will say in-mail, so it's third. In-mails cost you money, okay? So you want to do that. <coughs> or this button is dropped down and say get introduced. Well, if there are a third connection, there's two degrees of separation. So if I wanted to meet Allie, Allie, she's our picture. Okay, and she's a third, I would have to say, Mason, or say, Chance, would you ask Mason to ex tell Allie to accept Steve? Okay, it could happen, but the chances aren't that great, okay? So what I've discovered on this alumni portal, and you get here by finding under network, find alumni, or you can go to linkedin.com forward slash alumni, that's going to bring up the alumni portal. 
and it'll have your last floor of front school listed first. So we'll have Brigham Young University, Idaho. Who had, what's that? For the film. Yeah. Initially, we're going to school at the same time. Initially, it's going to have your years. So 79 for me to 84. Brother Bill and I went to school at the same time here. 85. Actually, that's not quite right. But we, he shows up. So you want to take that clear to the bottom, 1900. And you want to take the other side clear to the top, which is now 2021. Or is this going to give you everybody with a class here? But if you check that box, then it's going to give you everybody. Right now, it's over like 33,000 alumni on the students and alumni. If you click that box there, you can see, okay, you see where they live, where they work, what they do. Click that box, you can see what they studied, what they're skilled at, and how you're connected. And then you can go in and you can start filtering. So if I want to say, I want to find the finance alumni, then and here's health care right here, right there. So there's, can't read it, over a thousand, looks like a thousand something, even almost, health care. So if I click finance though, it's going to filter everybody out and show me just the finance alumni. So you can see all these are finance companies, banks and different places. So I say I'm interested in Fidelity Investments. If I click Fidelity Investments, it's going to give me the 11 alumni that work at Fidelity. The nice thing about that, if I wanted to connect with Andrew, I click this connect button, and it brings up this box, and it takes away the how do you know them. It takes away colleague, classmate, other friend. Yeah. So it, it, it's only the people who are working there currently, not like he used to work there, he's thrown in the yeah. jumble as well. Now you can find past employees on advanced search. This is oh. current. Good. Okay. So you can connect with seconds easily here and it takes away that dialogue box. But the real beauty of this is here's Judd, who's the third. I see just his first initial, but it shows me that his name when it brings it up. And I can go in and I can connect with the third on the alumni board. Okay. Now this makes sense to me because I actually think I found a flaw in LinkedIn. And I hope they don't discover it. But I'm not advertising it just to see why you want to go it makes sense to me that LinkedIn would say, Steve, you should be able to meet Judd and forget all the gobbledygook about how you know him. And you should be able to connect the third because you're all part of the global BYU-Idaho community. We're family, right? So that should work. Well, what you can do with this tool is let's say that the, that person, like you mentioned, is someone you want to meet and they didn't go to school here. Okay? Well, what you do is you go in and you change the school, pick a school, University of Montana, pick a company, Kaiser Permanente. Is that in healthcare? That's it. Okay. Well, that's going to bring them up. And you can connect with the third right here. Or a second without having the how do I know each other. So any second or third you want to connect with, all you need to know is two things. Where they went to school and where they work. Okay. And you can find anybody on LinkedIn and connect with any third. So I know LinkedIn makes millions of dollars a year on emails. So it doesn't make sense to me that they would make this this easy. So but it works. So it's, it's really, you can search for anybody you want in there? If yeah. You, wow. you find that person on LinkedIn, and you say, University of Montana, you click on University of Montana below, you know, right there on their profile, it'll take you right to this. No, but if you, know their, if you know their email and your friends, you just type them right in. Yeah. Especially when you're first starting out. Right. Okay, so let's talk about now, uh, there's value in groups. The value of groups is you're going to be noticed in your professional world. Every time you post a post, every time you comment on a post, every time you like a post, people see your name and see your picture. Okay. And the other nice thing about LinkedIn, just like Facebook, your network, anytime someone changes, any, in my network, people update something, it shows up in their feed. The more you work and update your profile, the more often you're seen by people. Okay, so now this is thing one, important thing one, was this. When you invite people to connect, especially if they have the potential of being a you know, primary contact, you want to have a really good invite to connect message. The second most important thing, maybe the most important thing, is when these people accept your connection, and if there's someone that could be a mentor or a door opener, then you want to craft a really good thank you message with an invitation to get to know each other. 
So in this case, David has accepted my invitation to connect. I see it in my email. He now has gone to a first connection. And I can message him through LinkedIn or through his email. They both go to his email. But I usually do this because in my thank yous, I've embedded some links, and the link, I know the links are going to work. So here, in this case, I'm using the LinkedIn one. You're going to say something like, Dear David, thank you for adding me as a connection on LinkedIn. I'm currently seeking opportunities and human resources. Could I give you a personal call for 10 minutes about your professional background and career? I look forward to visiting with you in person, and please let me know if I can be of any assistance. Okay, a message like that. Now, what happens next is the most important thing. Especially if David says, yeah, we can visit. If you can visit with him face to face in his office, best if not, maybe by Skype or by telephone at a minimum, you're gonna get with David and you're gonna ask him these kinds of questions. And this is where David turns into a mentor and you turn into a mentee. And all professionals love to talk about themselves and they love to share, especially if they're in that Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs loving their work well. You in my office, learning from me is awesome. <coughs> You're gonna say, how did you get involved in, what advice did you give me if I wanted to be successful in your line of work? What school did you attend, what did you study, what fun things, so on and so forth. This last question is super important, and that is, who else do you know that I should be talking to? Okay. Yeah. And, and it just kind of grows from there. And where the real cementing of this connection now becoming a friend and acquaintance, a relationship, is you're gonna walk out of that office, you've dressed well, you've been polite, you've asked good questions, he's gonna be impressed with you. And you're gonna solidify that because soon after that, you're going to send him a thank you message in, by email, probably. And even better, if three or four days later, he gets one in the mail. And this note saying, David, thank you for the time. I really learned a lot. Then uh, all of a sudden, you get into that friend acquaintance. So if that were to have happened in this pathway world right now, before it's open, once it's open, Mason would tell you, you cannot, candidate, go meet just JD. Can't, against the rules. But if that happened well before job openings come up, and then all of a sudden JD sees your application in that pile and remembers you and has a favorable impression of you, you're going to go from the staff to the interview pile. More than likely. Yeah, Mason. We, uh, we would ask them, too, before the hiring manager, if they know anyone <coughs> that they would like to apply for the position, yeah. and then we'd reach out to them and ask them yeah. if they'd be interested in, in the position they need to apply. So if you're not in that group, it's hard, huh? Yeah. Now, another really great tool that LinkedIn has is, is just brand new. Uh, a lot of people, you can buy products that do this. LinkedIn offers it for free. So every time I have an interaction with David, if he's a first or a second, I'm going to have this little button right here under his name. If he's a second, you'll just see a star. But if he's a first, you see a relationship. I, I'll see how we connected. I'll, I can make a note of every interaction that I have with David. David doesn't see this. This is just for me. I can make a note on how we met. I can set a reminder to send him a thank you message or to give him a call or whatever. Uh, I can tag him. I can have a, a, a group on LinkedIn of healthcare administrator mentors or whatever. And I can tag everybody I connect with there and then up under the contacts button, networking button, uh, then you can look at every one of your contacts and search them by your tags. Okay. You just click on the relationship one? Yeah, right here, this button right here. Okay. You can record every interaction you've ever had and set reminders. Okay. And will LinkedIn automatically let you know about reminders or do you have yeah. to go check through? No, you get a little note. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Every day in my email, I get something on LinkedIn that says, my reminders and my congratulations. So it says, it says two things. There's like three or four things. The first one that I see if you click on it, actually I'll just show it to you. Um, so I'm confusing myself here, just really quick. So right here, under my profile, right here, under network is my contact. And I've gone through this today already. The first one, so I won't see these, the first one will be congratulations. It'll go through all the people in my network who've gotten new jobs. 
glyphosate from vaccination. The next round is people who had a work anniversary. So I can go ahead and congratulate them on 10 years app. The next one are my reminders. It says, remember to send Chance a thank you note for talking to healthcare today. Whatever, okay? And then a bunch of suggested connections. But I can go in and I can say, okay, I want to, I want to tag, filter my, by tag, all of my students who come into my office for LinkedIn training, I want to tag them, and this is going to show that all of them. I can filter them. I can say, okay, I want to select these two or three. I'm going to send them a message right here. Okay. Got to hurry. We're running out of time. So I want to show you the, the LinkedIn video really quick. Actually, a couple of them. Okay. On LinkedIn, uh, on our homepage, byuiconnect.org, we have some trainings. We're creating training. Well, that's probably one thing Allie does. It helps us with our trainings, our graphics, and all that. And then university.linkedin.com has some unbelievable training materials. Uh, there's examples of some tip sheets and videos, and we can actually show you them. The university has a page. The Academic Discovery Center is a great resource on campus. We partner with them in this kind of networking venture. But I just want to just, I'll conclude with this, then we'll watch the short video. Uh, I got this email from Ariana. Ariana came into my office, and we worked through her LinkedIn profile. We got her to showing up more on search. And uh, then she, we created a LinkedIn group. She sent this to me. She said, just want to let you know that I've been sought out by a LinkedIn several times now and have gotten quite a bit of work that way as a freelance copywriter and editor. I know it's because I come up in the search first, and that's thanks to you for showing your tricks. So again, thank you so much for all your help, hope all as well. Well, this stuff works. And more and more, as we teach students how to do this as an alumni, we're hearing back, work, got a job, got an interest. And so it's, if you follow this kind of strategy, uh, it's really a great blessing. So here it is. If you go to university.linkedin.com, uh, you'll see the see all for your students. They've actually added a new one. One of the tip sheets, and that is a, a checklist that they've created. Well, I'm sure that this is a temporary not working thing, but there there are two videos there. So in the last four minutes, we'll do this. Let's uh, let's just play this game. Let's pick a company. Just show you how this works. Let's pick a company that you really want to work for. Hospital, something, something, somewhere in the world. IHC. What's that? IHC. IHC, Intermount Healthcare. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go in. We're going to do current company. We're going to add Intermountain Healthcare. Would that be it? Right. Okay. And let's say I want to find someone. What's, what job do I do at Intermountain Healthcare? Department head. Department head? Okay. What, what would their title be? Let's so summon manager, Intermountain Healthcare throughout the world. I didn't list BYU, Idaho, BYU, didn't do it, okay? So this is going to bring up the results, 869, okay? It's going to show my first connections first. All of, once you connect with me, my first will become your seconds, likely, and my seconds will become your third. So when you search, it always shows your first connections yes. first. And then the no, actually, not necessarily. Well, if you do that, it would. If you do a keyword search, it's more random. You can have a third or a second, whatever. Okay. So, uh, let me, I'm going to hide my first. Okay. Now, this person is not going to know who in the world I am. I'm just going to take a stab. This is what you don't want to do. If I went this to Lance Connect, invite Sam, Lance is going to go, who's that? Right. So you want to go in and do the connecting. Okay. Now. I'm going to take off my seconds and my group members. So here's here's the challenge of thirds. Okay, let's pick David Nilsson. 
Now, David actually would be easy to connect with because this symbol right here is what's called, David's book called an open networker. If you have that symbol, he, I'm safe to do this because he accepts everybody. That symbol says, and I can connect with the third because he's opted into that, okay? So that's the only one that would work on there. So let's do, let's do Chad P. So here's Chad, let's say I really gotta connect with Chad. I can send him an email which costs money. I can get introduced and you'll see the two degrees of separation. Someone's got to introduce me to them, and Chad, and then we can get connected. But we don't want to do that. So the way, what you want to do then is you want to utilize this uh, alumni portal. So what I need to see on Chad is these two things. Chad went to Weber State, and he works at Intermountain Healthcare. Okay. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go into my profile. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go here to Network. I'm going to go find alumni. This is going to bring up Idaho State because that's my last school. So I'm going to go to BYU Idaho. I'll just show you this real quick. So there's BYU Idaho, 79 to 84. Brother Bill, you there on page one? Yeah, there he is. Um, and the reason he graduated in 85, but he was here during my year. But we want to find uh, we want to find Chad. So I'm going to go in here and change this to Weber State University. <coughs> up all Weber State's alumni, 31,000, and if you expand this, you can see more. And I'm going to go down <coughs> here, Center of Mountain Healthcare, Healthcare, oops, did I do wrong? This is the second one, uh, uh, you put it there you go, there you go, Center of Mountain Healthcare, 540, that's a lot of people, Weber State must have a pipeline. I'm going to speed this up and just wild card search what's been Chad. So I can go in now and connect with him right here. That's all of them. Well, that's a that's it's a shortcut. It is a shortcut. <laughs> okay, what questions well, do you have? And Ali will take those pictures. He went through right up the store, right? Right up this, this store. Okay. Any questions that you have about networking, LinkedIn? So what are your hours to come in? Bro? We just just set appointment. Okay. Just set an appointment. Yeah. So should we just on LinkedIn say hey, come right? Yeah. Meet with your personal. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I have no reason to understand. Uh, while she's setting up, let me show you another, another quick way to add your network. Super Connectors is our favorite way. But there is a group out there called LinkedIn Open Networkers. So you just type in LinkedIn, I put in quotes, LinkedIn Open Networker. They're called Lions for short. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an industry. And LinkedIn Open Network says they'll accept anybody. So I'm going to do hospital health care right there. This is going to bring up all the LinkedIn Open Networkers. I want to add my thirds uh, on LinkedIn. And you're pretty safe to add these guys. If you ask enough people to accept you, and they, enough people say, I don't know you, they'll block you. I've been blocked twice. And you just call them and say no. But I've connected with some of these already. Uh, so there's 308, right? You got 308 people. And the goal is to get to 500. You got 300 just by doing this. Uh, and if you see this one right here, that means that they've also given themselves that tag. So this one. So this group, you're very safe to, you know, to, like, to go in and add these folks. And it's not bad because they're in the healthcare industry. You know, they're in your world. If you get that message, that means that they've not yet accepted me. So I've, I've actually clicked on his name before. <laughs> That's another way, if you want to kind of jump your network up, and all these people have big networks, add the open network. Yeah? What's a good amount of a network um, as a student? Like, what would be a good goal for us to have if we were looking to try to get internship opportunities? Everybody should get to 500. That's the baseline. 501? 500 ones. Yeah, and once you get to 500 words, this kind of turns into a tipping point where it just kind of mushrooms. So we can add you? Absolutely. What's your name? C. Davis. Yeah. And if you go here, again, I'm 
not clear on this. If you go to the BYU item homepage, I'll show you Scott Greenhouse's picture really quick. So here, alumni, this is our networking page. And here under networking, we have LinkedIn Super Connectors. And there's over 200 of them. And there'll be some hospital and healthcare types. So if I click on hospital and healthcare, uh, they will have a connect button. And the way LinkedIn works, if anybody knows this right here, you can add anybody. So these Super Connectors have shared with us their kind of their tag. Okay. And at the top of that page, we say everybody should connect with three of us in my office, myself, with a carpenter, Bill Sullivan, and then here's Scott Greenhouse, and he does what I do at do do. So add him, and he'll accept everybody. And then you get a lot more search results. Do you know how many he has? Probably he's double me, at least. Oh. Yeah, he's up 20,000. LinkedIn caps you at 30,000. So once you get 30,000, you can't add anybody else. So can you start deleting people off so you can add more probably actual contact? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I don't think a lot of people there, so. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, thank you. let's give Steve Ace a applause. <laughs> um, real quick, if you want your picture, I guess we just go out in the hall. Right here. And then